I'm Dr. John Gazin in the Department of Family Practice, and I'll be talking about the abdominal exam and demonstrating the abdominal exam techniques we'd like the students to learn. Of course, you're welcome to share with them other tips that you may have and other pearls you've gleaned from your experience, but we do want them to learn the exam as I'll demonstrate it. Okay, we'll first, we'll first start with by inspecting the abdomen. You're looking for the, the abdominal contour, whether it's scaphoid or concave or flat, as this patient is, or rounded. Also looking for the symmetry of the abdomen in terms of is the, is the uh, contour symmetric both in um, side to side and also from superior to inferiorly. For example, um, is it distended just in the upper quadrants of the abdomen? Um, after, examining the, after examining the contours of the abdomen, you'll need to auscultate. And the student should do this before they percuss or palpate the abdomen as, as, those, um, as either percussing or palpating may affect the patient's bowel sounds. And you'll want to um, auscultate for bowel sounds using the diaphragm in all four quadrants of the abdomen. Right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, the left lower quadrant, and the right lower quadrant. After auscultating for bowel sounds, you'll want to listen for uh, vascular sounds using the bell, because these sounds are typically more low pitched, and we'll be listening f over the aorta, the renal, and the iliac arteries. The aorta is located just to the left of the midline in the hypogastric area. And then you want to listen in both the left and upper, left and right upper quadrants for the renal arteries. and the left lower and right lower quadrants for the iliac arteries. Okay. Then we'll move on to percussing the abdomen, and you want to listen for the, the percussion tone, and over most of the abdomen, the tone will be tympanic due to the, the bowel gas. It's, it's helpful to sort of move in a, uh, just to be sure you assess all four quadrants in a systematic way, although that's not, re not required of the students to do that. And it'll percuss for the liver span, and you want to start with that in the uh, midclavicular line, beginning in the abdomen over an area of, of tympani. And you'll percuss upwards until the per percussion becomes dull. You can either use a pen or just use a landmark. Do you mind if I run in your stomach here? Okay. To mark the lower edge of the abdomen. Then you want to begin percussing over the lung fields, again in the midclavicular line, uh, to locate the superior aspect of the liver. And percuss downwards to the superior margin of the liver. I'm trying your chest now. So all right. Then you can either use a measuring tape or a pocket ruler to estimate the patient's liver span. Next, we'll percuss for the spleen, and this is done in the anterior axillary line on the left side of the patient in the lowest intercostal space, so just above the uh, lowest rib. And that should be a panic percussion note. Ask the patient to take in a deep breath and hold it. Percuss again on the same spot. Go ahead and exhale. And that note should remain tympanic. If it becomes dull, that would indicate that the spleen uh, is enlarged. Uh, after percussion, then we'll go ahead and begin palpating the abdomen. And you want to palpate with the pot with the pads of your fingers. You want to do it very lightly initially. If a person is complaining of pain, it's helpful to start away from the patient's pain to keep them from getting too uh, worried and too nervous about experiencing a lot of pain during the exam. And it helps to relax a person's stomach muscles if you just have them bend at their knees and hips. So if you can just flex your legs up here, and we'll start in the in the left upper quadrant, and you're palpating for 
uh, muscle tone, any sign of pain or irritation, any guarding or tightening of the muscles, or any masses. You then want to palpate more deeply. And again, you want to watch for, it's helpful sometimes to watch the patient's face for any signs of pain or discomfort. You're looking for any masses, any pain. For people that are um, have large abdomen, sometimes you have to palpate with both hands in order to get enough pressure. Anything sore or painful there? No. Okay. Now let's see if we can feel the liver in the right upper quadrant. So I'm going to, several ways to do this. First, I'm going to palpate pressing upwards against you know, the pads of the fingers and just like you just to breathe in and out slowly. It helps do this over several respiratory cycles to uh, help the patient to relax because you'll be pressing fairly firmly here. I'd like you to take a real, a, a very deep breath. And what you want to try to feel the edge of the liver as it comes down, it will feel it tapping, tapping your fingers. Another way to do this is with the side of your hand, uh, again, putting this uh, using the radial aspect of your uh, index finger to push in and again, ask the patient to take a deep breath and try to feel the liver margin uh, come down against your, your finger. And another acceptable way, acceptable way to do this is using a hook technique where you reach over the top of the lowest rib and hook your fingers around the rib and ask, again, ask the patient to take a deep breath and try again to feel the liver margins that comes down below the rib cage with, with inspiration. We're going to see if we can palpate the patient's spleen. And to do that, we're going to take uh, your left hand and place it behind the patient uh, in the lower part of the rib cage, pull them just very gently and slightly towards you. Then, with the examining hand, I'm going to push in, uh, around the middle area of the abdomen and then push upwards very deeply. I'm going to be pushing fairly firmly here. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to take in a deep breath and you try to feel the spleen tip uh, again, just sort of tap against your finger. And in normal individuals, you often uh, will not feel the spleen. Okay. Then, we're going to check the uh, pulsation of the aorta to be sure that's not enlarged. And we're going to do that with the opposing fingers of your thumb and your index and middle finger. You're going to slide to the left to midline, and you're just in the hypogastric area. And you're going to just push in, and the, uh, most of the pulsation should be directed anteriorly towards your fingers. In patients that are large, you may have to push in with both hands from the sides. Like this. Okay. Now we're going to uh, check for costal vertebral angle or CVA tenderness. I want to ask the patient to sit up, please. Okay. You're going to do this by percussing over the kidney, so right below the lowest rib, using the ulnar aspect of your fist. It takes a little bit of practice to do this, so you don't uh, hit either too softly or, or too firmly. So I'm just going to tap right. I want you to tell me if this is particularly tender. Okay. In the normal sequence of the abdominal exam for students, to be begin with inspection and to auscultate for bowel sounds and for vascular sounds, to percuss, to palpate, and to check for CVA tenderness. Okay. 